is said that every year Plough is visited by thousands of international travellers. It is said they arrive after long journeys across the oceans. It is said they do not arrive by plane or by boat. It is said they arrive without clothes or food. It is said that they have flown themselves here on their own wings over thousands of miles of open water without compass or map. They arrive tired and hungry. They are small and fragile but possess willpower and knowledge beyond our imagination. These travellers, these winged ambassadors, some so small that they will fit in the palm of your hand, choose Palau because they can rest and feed here for a short while before continuing onwards. Some of these birds over the course of their lives will fly hundreds of thousands of miles, almost the equivalent of flying to the moon. It is said they can fly 1500 kilometers in one day, and they can do this day after day after day. They choose Palau because it provides them with habitat they need to recover their energy. Palau is like an oasis for these birds. Without Palau, these incredible navigators and flyers would not survive. Many thousands fly through Palau, coming from Australia on their way to Asia or even Alaska. This collective migration route is known as the East Asian Australasian Flyway, or EAAF for short. Palau takes these travellers in like long lost family members, offers them a place to rest and recover. After a long flight, everyone wants a nice bath and a snooze. Palau takes pride in its rich and pristine coastlines, sand flats and lagoons, which are perfect for these weary travellers, so much so that a large number of different species of birds make the effort to come here. The coastline of Niwal and Narad are good habitats for birds, but by far the most popular 
of the intertidal sand flats of Peleliu. The Lucas sand flats are visited annually by at least 3,000 birds. 90% of all the migratory shorebirds visiting Palau. These sand flats were designated an important bird area by BirdLife International in 2016 and is something the people of Peleliu and indeed the whole of Palau are especially proud of. It is a safe haven for them to feed and rest, quiet and isolated. It is a unique environment in Palau and a hotspot for the whole of Oceania as there is nothing else like it for thousands of miles in any direction. Its sands are full of food for the hungry visitors and are exposed for long periods of time by the tide. These coastal areas in and around Nedbus and Blausmau are ideal roosting areas at high tide as they are undeveloped and peaceful. It is right on our doorstep but many of us do not realise how important it is to both birds and locals alike. Just like local fishermen, the visiting birds are varied in shape and method of catching food. Their bills are different, so that although they flock to the same habitat, they search for different prey. Those with short beaks peck or turn over stones like the aptly named ruddy turnstone. Others have much longer beaks for deftly catching crustaceans or for burrowing into sand to find the juicy invertebrates hiding there. Different lengths mean different depths you can probe to. And when you're hungry, a juicy worm is always welcome. One such migratory shorebird has been known to Palauans for generations and it holds great significance in our culture. Its name is Dilarok, the Far Eastern Curlew and the Money Bird. It is told that the bird brings money with it wherever it goes. It eats it, then excretes it somewhere else, delivering Palauan money from one person to another. Some say that where it is allowed to settle and is not chased away, it delivers more. Some say because the bird did not deliver, it was squeezed until it died. It has made people rich and the wealthiest chiefs in Palau, but only when it was left alone. If Palau lost its Delarock, it would lose its wealth. Can Palau afford to lose its money bird? It is now said that the Delarock is disappearing. It is becoming rarer and rarer. Numbers are plummeting throughout its range, mainly due to habitat loss. Its resting and feeding places along its migration route in the EAAF are being destroyed. It is now globally endangered and could go extinct within our generation. The Lucas Sand Flats are one of the last places that Delarock can be found and they are its last hope in Palau. So we must provide a home for it and its relatives, those winged ambassadors who fly so far to be here. In 2008, Palau joined the Convention on Migratory Species. This multinational agreement, signed by 120 governments all around the world, aims to protect terrestrial, aquatic and avian species that travel between countries. It is a cooperative effort and Palau has signed on to be part of that. The CMS covers a range of species in Palau including the dugong, tuna, sharks and migratory shorebirds. So we as Palauans must do our part 
in this multinational effort and protects all these species, including our feathered ambassadors such as the Delaroc that pass through Palau. The role of these ambassadors in Palau is subtle but important. Where they feed and rest, they excrete. And just as the Delaroc excretes money, all these birds in doing so fertilize the intertidal areas. This fertilizer is dispersed with the incoming tide and enriches the ecosystem that supports crabs and fish and so many other species we like to harvest and feed our families with. But why are these birds ambassadors? When they leave Palau and continue on their migratory journey, they take with them a message. This message is simple. It says that Palau is a place that welcomes everyone. Palau is a good host, and this is something that all Palauans can be proud of. And just like family members returning from overseas, we in Palau must ensure that our door is always open for them with a place to rest and food on the table. It has been said that their future is our future. By providing them a home, we ensure that we have one too. We cannot offer them sanctuary if we destroy ours. It is said that we are all linked and all part of an interconnected world. Oh, Hey!